is get the shrimp marinated. I have about a half a teaspoon of Cajun seasoning, about a tablespoon of garlic powder, some paprika, some onion powder. Get this a little stir. This shrimp has been deveined. This is wild caught Louisiana shrimp. Once it's coated really nicely, we're gonna add some olive oil. This is extra virgin olive oil about a half a cup this is the look we're going for cover it and put it in the refrigerator for an appetizer the wild sea scallops wrapped in applewood smoked bacon and this wicked amazing mango sauce that i had gotten for 59 cents i've never had this before sweet and fruity with turmeric lime and a chili kick thought this would be worth the try for 59 cents we're going to use this as a glaze for the scallops they look really cute I'm gonna open this pack and I'm gonna pour some of this sauce in here so that they can marinate until we're ready to cook them. I just opened it and I tasted it and I can say this stuff is good. I'm gonna put these back in the box without the wrapper and I'm gonna stick them in the fridge until we're ready to cook them. We're gonna to toast pecans to go on top of our salad. This is an equal parts mixture of coconut sugar, date sugar, cinnamon, a pinch of salt, and two or three pinches of cayenne pepper. Mix it all up, but we're gonna bake it at 325 for about five to seven minutes. But first we need to roast this garlic in oil. So here is the two bulbs that we peeled. There's still plenty of room, so I'm gonna peel a third bulb. Now that our little ramekin is full, we are gonna cover them with olive oil. I'm gonna put this on a baking pan just to make sure that if it spills over it's not gonna make a mess. We're gonna bake at 250 degrees for one hour. All right guys it is time to check the garlic. I am so glad I put it on this pan. So here's our test. Yes this is exactly what we want. Okay now we are gonna let this cool I cannot even begin to describe how amazing this smells. Okay, friends, for Valentine's, we're gonna make some Buckeye candy. It's one of my family's favorites. It's very simple and easy to make. Instead of making them into a ball shape, like a traditional Buckeye, we're gonna use these heart candy molds and we are gonna make them into hearts and then we'll dip them. I have this leftover from a chocolate fountain that we had at one of my son's weddings two years ago. So this really needs to be used up. Plus I have a white chocolate baking bore that I had gotten on clearance. I actually melted a little bit on the way home. It's been in the freezer. I just pulled that out. We may use a combination of the two. For the inside of the Buckeye, I use a combination of cream cheese, butter, vanilla, salt, powdered sugar, and peanut butter. This is a two-step process. First part is easy. We're just gonna mix it all together in a bowl and fill the molds. The difficult part is we have to wait to dip them into chocolate. So we're gonna make it this evening they'll sit in the refrigerator overnight and then tomorrow we'll make them pretty one of the easiest treats you could make at home two ounces of cream cheese and a half a cup of butter gonna mix this up really well i mix it on low to start once this is incorporated you're gonna add the peanut butter one and one half cups of peanut butter we're gonna put this on slow as well now i'm gonna turn the speed up we're gonna add a pinch of salt a splash of vanilla or two. I love vanilla and I'm always very generous with it. This is three cups powdered sugar and we're just gonna add a little bit at a time, probably a cup and then a cup and then a cup. Before we add the second cup, I'm gonna get my scraper and scrape the sides down. Now we're gonna add the second cup. Your end result after mixing will look like this. I'm gonna grab a spoon and give it a taste. If you want it sweeter, add more powdered sugar. If your peanut butter is runny or sticky, add more powdered sugar. I like the consistency to look like this. I think we're fine on taste. These are ice cube molds that I had gotten on clearance for like 10 cents a piece after Valentine's Day two years ago. We do want them to come out easily, so I'm gonna use this coconut oil spray. And we're just gonna fill the trays. We still have half of the mixture left, and I did these three trays. There's 12 in here, so this is 36. It's gonna be plenty to do this, so we'll end up with seven too. The first tray took me a little bit longer because I was trying to get the hearts flat and even. This tray was really easy because I decided not to worry about that. It doesn't matter if they're a little bit higher. In fact, it's going to kind of look three-dimensional. I think the easiest way is to form a little ball and then just push the ball in and then push up like that. I have some little parchment paper squares 
I'm gonna stack them like this. All right, friends, just finished loading up the last three trays. So we ended up with 72 parts. It took no time and it cost pennies. Plus, there's three extra. These three will be perfect for us to taste as testers and not interfere with the dozen for each of the six family members or six friends or coworkers or neighbors or whoever you wanna share them with. This is gonna go in the fridge. We still have five trays in the refrigerator. I'm gonna use those for our family for Valentine's, but I'm gonna do this six tray today so I can include this in the meal that I'm gifting someone. I took eight of them out. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do 12 or if I'm only gonna do eight. Plus there's one brown ball. It's a tester. Yes, you need to make these. This is so sweet. The sentiment and the special touch is there. It costs pennies and it is out of this world delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back in the fridge until right before it's time to pack up. It's like individual personal truffles. How sweet is that? I got these last year after Valentine's for $1.99 a piece. I think I got them at Hobby Lobby. So I paid $4 for these pans. I'm choosing to put the kids' favorite cake in here. A chocolate brownie would be really sweet in here too. My favorite way to icing bundt cakes like this, whether it's homemade or store-bought. I just take the icing and heat it up in the microwave, give it a stir, and then it's pourable. And then you still have half of it left. I'm only gonna use the pink and the purple sprinkles. A dollar for the cake mix and 50 cents for the icing. Fill them with their favorite dessert, which is the best part. Use whatever you have. That's what I did. This is what I had in the pantry, so that's what I used. All right, are y'all ready for some of the most delicious garlic cheesy bread ever? This is the roasted garlic. It has completely cooled. We're gonna take our oven roasted garlic along with all the oil. We're gonna add our butter, one stick of butter. Some black pepper, some salt, some parsley. I'm using freeze dried. A little drizzle of the fermented garlic honey. We're gonna get the lid on. Puree. We pureed it for maybe two minutes. Look at that goodness. We're gonna have way more than we need, but we will gladly use it this week. You can put it under the broiler just like this, or you can add cheese. Of course, we are celebrating Valentine's, so we are going all out. I'm gonna add both types of cheese. I'm gonna add mozzarella and then Parmesan on top. For our Valentine meal, I don't use measurements, about a fourth of a cup, maybe a third of a cup. I'm gonna use raspberry balsamic vinegar. One, two, three. Three pretty big splashes, fermented garlic honey. Pretty big giant teaspoon. After you stir in the mustard, this is the consistency. If you want it thinner than this, add more oil. We're gonna add some salt, pepper, and a splash of lemon juice. I'm gonna start with half a lemon and then I taste it and then I decide if I want more. And you can stir it, or you can just put the lid on the mason jar and shake it. I like to make it in a mason jar, so if I have extra, it's easy to keep in the fridge. Give it a taste. I think I might want a little bit more pepper. That's perfect. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do with the salad is we are gonna coat it with this dressing and we're gonna massage it. I used about half of what I just made. This should be enough. Massaging your tail makes a big difference in the texture, in the taste. It's a game changer. When I make a kale salad, my preference is to massage the kale with the dressing, put it in the refrigerator, and then add the other ingredients before serving. We have a beautiful salad. Kale, avocado, pomegranate, and feta with a honey Dijon vinaigrette dressing. We are gonna have some amazing garlic cheesy bread, some bacon wrapped scallops for an appetizer, and then we're gonna have shrimp scampi. What you're gonna need is some angel hair pasta, an onion, parsley, lemon, the marinated shrimp, a little bit of bacon grease, some Parmesan cheese, some butter, salt, pepper, paprika, chili powder, chili flakes, some olive oil, some white wine. Now, this is what we're gonna make the shrimp scampi in. So this is gonna be the star of our Valentine dinner. How cute is that? It's a two quart Dutch oven. Oh, it's so cute. I can't wait. Let's get started. Oh, and we cannot forget dessert. I think they came out adorable. 
and they are so delicious. All right, let's get to it. We are gonna see how easy it is to cook in this beautiful little two quart part. We're gonna turn the heat to medium. I have a few splashes of olive oil and a tablespoon of butter. Now it looks like a lot more because the pot is so little. The pot is little, but it is deep. Because it's so narrow, we're gonna break up the shrimp scampi and cook it in two parts and we'll serve it in here. All right, here we go. I'm so excited. I call this my Cajun spatula because it's perfect for when you don't want stuff to stick on the bottom. But this came from the Dollar Tree for $1.25. Once it starts boiling, turn it a little bit lower. The first thing I'm gonna add is my chili. Okay, it's hot because it's so little, I guess. So I'm gonna turn it way lower. We're gonna add some salt and pepper. I don't know why I have a tendency to grab the pepper first. Big pinch of salt. Oh, it smells so good. Up. Okay, we are making shrimp scampi. It's romantic and easy. Perfect for Valentine's Day, especially if it's on a weekday. Now we're gonna add our onion. It was cooking a little bit too fast. Now I turn a little, the heat a little bit too low. We are not gonna brown the onions because we're not making a gravy. We're just making a butter sauce. Now that the onions have been in there for just a minute, we are gonna turn up the heat and we're gonna add the garlic. I have two minced cloves of garlic. And these are fresh, they are not frozen. Now we're gonna add a little bit of tomato. This is one half of the last brown Kamado that I had from Trader Joe's. Turn the heat up. We're gonna add a little bit of wine. I like to use a really dry wine, anywhere from a third to a half of a cup. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of shrimp stock because I have some in the fridge. So I didn't add quite as much wine as I typically would because I'm gonna add a little bit of shrimp stock. Just a splash. I'm adding a little pinch of parsley. Now let's turn this a little bit lower. We are gonna let the sauce reduce and thicken up a little. Now we're gonna move on to the shrimp. Let's turn the heat on. We marinated it in olive oil. So we're just gonna use some of the oil that's in the marinade to heat up the pan. And okay, we're gonna go ahead and put our shrimp in. Okay, so this is why I wanted to cook the shrimp in a separate pot. It's better to have space so all the shrimp can be laid out side by side. Let them cook for a minute or so, then flip them. We're gonna turn the heat off while we flip them. Okay, so now that we've turned the shrimp off, we're gonna add a little bit of lemon zest. We're also gonna add the juice of a lemon. I started with a half, and according to how much liquid is in the bottom of the shrimp, I think that's enough. Next, let's add our angel hair pasta. The angel hair was tossed with olive oil. Give this a good toss. Now's the time to give your pasta a little taste and see if you wanna adjust the seasonings. I tasted mine and I felt like it definitely needed more salt and pepper, and I put a little tiny bit of cayenne. Once you're satisfied with the taste, go ahead and turn it off, pour your shrimp on top. We're gonna add a little bit of parsley. So we put a little bit of parsley. Now we're gonna put a little bit of basil. After the shrimp scampi has a chance to rest for a few minutes, that's when I like to add the Parmesan cheese. A couple of pinchfuls of fresh Parmesan cheese that I just grated. And we have a beautiful, delicious, sweet, romantic meal. For one. For two. For three. For four. I would say this little pot holds enough to feed at least four people. So if there's more than four in your family, you may want more than one of these cute little pots. So this is how I'm going to deliver the salad. The kale was marinated with the dressing, but I did not drizzle more dressing on top. I'm going to bring the rest of the dressing just like this, and then that way they can they can add more dressing right before they eat. Here's our bread and our bacon wrapped scallops. I put them under the broiler together for about four and a half minutes. They're ready. I wish we can taste them, but this time it's not for us. We are blessing someone else with this, so I will not be tasting it, but it does look scrumptious. Oh, and we cannot forget dessert. Look at how cute these are and they're so delicious it reminds me to stop and take a break take a breath and focus on what's really important may we all do that this valentine's day love you guys till next time